Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is now just 49 days away from its official release by writer and director J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio, as well as creator George Lucas. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, what's really exciting about Episode 9 is that we do know that this film, at the end of the day, is going to contain many different twists and turns, as well as surprises and connections to the prequels and the originals, as a way to truly end the Skywalker saga and treat this movie as the culmination of the saga that started back in 1977. And it's not just that, it's also that J.J. wants to use this movie as a base, if you will, a foundation to create some new Star Wars lore surrounding the Jedi, the Sith, and the Force overall. Now, on top of all of this, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film, and when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very exciting for Episode 9. Now, specifically, what's intriguing about all of this is that shot descriptions consisting of a sequence where it's explained that both Kylo Ren and his Knights of Ren are said to be on board of a First Order shuttle that is described to jump to hyperspace as they have discovered Darth Vader's Wayfinder device that allows them to travel over to the Unknown Regions. It's explained that as they begin to exit hyperspace, they are approaching an unknown world that has little to no life, where as they approach the surface of this world, they are following a weak signal of a crashed Star Destroyer from decades ago. The Star Destroyer is at the date back many years ago, where it appears to be rusted and divided into different segments, where as Kylo and the Knights of Ren land, they travel into the abandoned, crashed Imperial Destroyer. As they make their way to the bridge of the ship, it's explained that Kylo and his Knights are looking out to a landscape of canyons that appears to be made out of some strange material. Kylo Ren is said to power on the Star Destroyer from one of the control panels, where it's said that a miniature hologram of Grand Admiral Thrawn begins to play in front of Kylo Ren and his knights. The Thrawn hologram is said to be talking about the Unknown Regions and is said to reveal that he believes that Palpatine has survived and, re and resides over in the world of Exegol. It's explained that the Thrawn hologram is just as small as Vader's in Empire Strikes Back when the AT-ATs are approaching Echo Base. However, Thrawn's voice is said to be coming through some kind of speaker system, loud and clear, revealing that the Beyond is just next to this world, and that Kylo resides on, and that Thrawn unveils that he had become an ally with a Jedi to, that actually was able to survive, that eventually left to escape. Thrawn unveils that he survived the crash after they jumped to hyperspace many decades ago. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, this Jedi that Thrawn speaks of, without a doubt, obviously here, it's, of course, Ezra Bridger. Now, we've been talking about Ezra Bridger for quite a long time now and how J.J. is really going to fill in the gaps in between Star Wars Rebels and the sequel trilogy and exactly what happened to both Ezra and Thrawn. Of course, in 2020, we're going to be learning more about this in greater depth in the forms of books, novels, and comics, but The Rise of Skywalker is going to hint at their survival in, of course, the Star Wars franchise. Now, Grand Admiral Thrawn may be dead for all we know, but he survived the crash after jumping the hyperspace, as we saw at the very end of Star Wars Rebels Season 4. So Season 4 was very ambiguous, I really do have to admit. Very ambiguous ending, you don't really know what happened to Thrawn and or Ezra, but the fact that they are trying to use Episode 9 as a foundation to create new Star Wars lore, to really set things up for the new expanded universe that's going to kickstart in 2020, answering a lot, of the boon, a lot of the burning questions from Star Wars Rebels and other Star Wars, you know, kind of material out there as well. So, this world, we're not quite sure exactly where or what it really is, but it's actually said to be the very spot just near the beyond. So, this world must be very close to the world of Exegol, that is indeed now the home of Palpatine himself. Now, they found this world all thanks to Darth Vader's Wayfinder device. Now, Vader's Wayfinder device, by the way, includes hyperspace routes over to the Unknown Regions, which could very well explain as to why, what we went over, as to why Vader had some scenes, or had some interactions with Supreme Leader Snoke sometime after the events of Order 66. So, with that being said, Grand Admiral Thrawn, the miniature hologram that Kylo Ren comes across where he's able to see Thrawn speaking about the beyond and how he believes that Palpatine survived and that he's alive on the world of Exegol, really does make you wonder now, right? Is Grand Admiral Thrawn going to make a appearance in the flesh 
a part of Palpatine's new Sith Empire. Of course, with the First Order by Kylo Ren, Supreme Leader Ren, we have, of course, General Hux, and we have a Legion General Pride. But as far as Palpatine's new Sith Empire, it is very possible that he found Grand Admiral Thrawn, or that Thrawn found Palpatine, and became allies once again. To me, I think that would be a very good thing in order to bring things full circle, and to kind of have him a part of Palpatine's new Sith Empire, or maybe even at the very least, doing something that's going to tie in with the future Star Wars lore. So, anyways guys, drop a comment below, and let me know what you think about all of this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.